is food service. Well, we have multiple categories. But the most important is food service and limited service. Uh, food service is the one that has more amenities, restaurants, etc. Limited service is the ones that don't. Uh, so instead of going first to national, the total national hotels, we're going to see the total national food service and then the total national limited service in order to understand national. So, um, and strange enough, but the peak in the hospitality industry uh, was in 2007, not in 2005 or 6, was in 07. And um, the recession, 09, and then we came back to the same kind of numbers in 15. Uh, in 07, you can see there's more volume transactions. There were more than 57 uh, billions transacted on, on 07. 970 properties. Uh, the total units, uh, total units mean total rooms that were transacted. No, I'm sorry, total hotels. Uh, 248,000. And the average, it's called PPU or PPK, is a uh, number of tours. Uh, that's how you calculate in hospitality. So, um, the peak was 156,141, and what it means in hospitality is that the ADR of the property uh, was around, the average daily rate per night was about 150, 100 and more or less close to 156. Uh, the average cap rate was 8.1, which was which is really good by the time, that's why it's a peak. And it can be contrasted to the 09, where you see a lower amount of transactions uh, two, point, two billion dollars uh, full service, and only 144 hotels traded. Uh, and um, what calls everyone's attention is this number here is the average per door. It dropped dramatically to 86,000 uh, per door. That means that during the recession, the drop in the ADR, average daily per night, dropped like if you were staying at, I don't know, the Hampton Inn, or if you're staying at any uh, local. Uh, limited service hotel. Um, the cap rates, um, it says 9.2, 9 uh, which is fine, but during the crisis, mm, it was very difficult to go by cap rate because it was distressed assets. Uh, and these properties doesn't have long-term leases. So the income stream of the property was extremely low or has a problem, and sometimes it was just not even, the property had a problem, but it was the uh, fund or the, the one holding the asset, the one that they had a problem or was a foreclosure. Tonight. So, and here we say uh, that we're going back to the same numbers in terms of um, trading, the kind of trading properties. We have been recovering 146,000 uh, units have been sold, 621 trans uh, uh, hotels. Uh, and the average daily rate or the price per door jumped significantly to 242, the cap rates now are very low, 7.8 average. So that's in the full service range. And in the limited service, again, we see that 2007 was our peak uh, market, 23 billion uh, uh, total uh, properties, 2,000 properties were traded, uh, total units 240, and you see here, again, it's the uh, per door, 76,178. Um, at a cap rate 9.3, and normally uh, limited service trade anywhere between nine and a half and 11 percent because of risk uh, inherent to limited service. If you stay in a hotel that is a limited service and they open something cheaper next door, you go to the next door. It's just not a question of quality or, or the services provided. Uh, so, and now in terms of the U.S., where is the U.S. Go, go left, Rebecca. The other way. Okay. The old hotel. Rebecca, it's fine. Right. 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 Oh, well, you can go up too. So the now. levels in the U.S., uh, we see again, peak. we haven't yet there, the peak in 07, the amount of property that was traded. But again, it was pre recession. People were trading properties, uh, trying to make the most out of it. But uh, um, what we see is that. Uh, 3,000 properties were traded. The, the average per door was 123,000 uh, per door, and the average cap was 8.8. .8. Uh, now we have uh, better cap rate, uh, generally speaking, 8.3. Uh, 
Um, so the, the peak, we're now at a peak versus pre-recession. Uh, even pre-recession, the, the price was nine. What this indicates that is that uh, limited service, general hotels speaking, they are traded at a very low cap rate, uh, which is not historically uh, realistic uh, since limited service is traded normally higher uh, anywhere between nine and 11. So most likely this has been affected by uh, this number, by um, what we saw before is that limited service are now trading lower cap rate than they should be. Okay, and so what about, what is Miami? So now going to Miami. You just, just walk. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, I didn't know if one of those All right, so this is this is all of Miami. Uh, as you can see in in 07, uh, there was one over, over just around 1.4 billion in uh, volume, um, and then it wasn't until the next year that we saw the the cap rate reach the lowest that it did at 6.9 percent. Um, recession period was in 09, 9.8 percent. Uh, but very low volume as compared to the rest of the years there. And then uh, same with the average um, price per unit or price per room, uh, relatively low compared to the rest of the time there in the recession period. But um, the interesting thing is in 2015, um, obviously as you can see, that number is significantly larger than the rest of them, but there's still a very large cap rate. Um, so. Is, is, is that $418,000 per door? Yes. <laughs> that's full service. 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 And so again, that's when you need to look inside the data and say, okay, what transactions actually transpired it, and what's truly my comp set, right? Yeah. Yes. And and what doesn't hold water there is is that you are significantly above the per key price nationally, but the cap rates don't you know don't hold that you know so. But again, with hotels, so, you know, how do you get cap rate, right? You got to have revenue data from the hotel and how easy or how reliable is that information in hospitality? Not very much. You know, and how easy is it to get? So this is just a hard asset class to get your hands around that way. But, you know, I would ask questions, you know, what's in there and, you know. Uh, so totally. And Miami is another animal in hospitality versus the rest of the U.S. because we have the influence from Europe, uh, Latin America. Uh, we've seen properties that are being traded at 4% cap rate. Um, there's one in downtown Miami, in Berkeley, that traded at 4.5%, which is absurd. Right. Um, right. So the, the ADR is at very high right now in, in Miami, in, depending on the concept, but especially on the service luxury and hotel and, luxury. And, and Irene, you keep referring to, you're equating ADRs to the average per key. Is, is, that, is that a sort of industry measure that if yes. you're at, at what vacancy you can compare those two at what? Like if you're at 80% or 70% or? Well, you don't use, um, the golden rule is uh, per key that you pay more or less what you can do on your ADR per key. And then from there you take your your occupancy, and then you do the discounting, you start discounting. But let's say that somebody's offering me a hotel, uh, regardless of they tell me that we have a 80% right, occupancy. Yeah, but ADR of 400 with uh, occupancy of 80 is not the same thing as ADR of 400 with an occupancy of 40. No. So, but that's what I'm trying to say is, I mean, if you're gonna use that rule of thumb, and people use rules of thumb, going back to heuristics, People use rules of thumb for everything, but... Well, your average, is, your average normally is 65. Okay, so that's my point, is if, if I'm at 65, I can pay yes. 
per door what my ADR is. Yeah, 65, 65. Okay, all right, and then the math works is what you're saying. Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. How does rev par factor into that? Well, it does affect, but it affects in the valuation. Because val the rev par takes into consideration the occupancy and the, and the rate. But I thought rev par was used as a metric for performance. It is a metric for Right, because it takes ADR and, 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 then, and then it applies the occupancy factor to it. So it's, it's more of an operating metric yeah. than a valuation metric. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay? All right, questions? Um, the average per square foot, like, and the cap rate, I'm getting about $96 if you run the okay. numbers. Okay, but, but they're, they're in hotels, like with multifamily, they use units, not square footage. So, so that's, that's 18000 per key. I'm like sorry? How would you do the net operating income on that? Like, how would you come back down to, like, how much is it per day? Okay, well, so again, I mean, I'm, you know, you're talking about the P&L of a hotel, but so we went through this the other day. Available room nights, well, available rooms, available days, average room rate or average daily rate gives you the sort of effective gross potential income, right? Then you apply the occupancy factor to it to get the ref par, right? Revenue per available room night, okay? Then you got all your operating expenses below that, you know, all your food, well, hold on, excuse me. To that you add your food and beverage revenue, then you subtract all of your operating expenses, including your food and beverage revenue, and you come down to an NOI. But we don't have that data here. Somebody is assuming that they've got what the hotel's NOI is in order to derive a cap rate. Well, I mean, listen, these are people that get paid to do this, so they find ways to triangulate it. You know, rent rolls aren't public. Hotel operating incomes aren't necessarily public, but this company purports to have, you know, um, reliable information. Well, that, that's why you use the rule of thumb of the ADR and the number of rooms, and then uh, you get an approximation of a price. Because um, I'm going to give you my NOI of the hotel. Um, and STAR doesn't give you NOI of the hotel. But, but, but like, like, but like with multifamily, there are target operating, you know, yeah. percentages that you should have in your food and beverage area and in your hotel operations area, right? And so, again, that's why I asked the question. If, if in fact, you can manage to 65%, you can pay what the ADR is per key because ultimately, well, times a thousand, because you ultimately get back to a reasonable return expectation. And, and also, uh, you know more or less that in a food service, you should be operating at uh, uh, anywhere between 38 to 42% gross margin. Uh, so there are certain metrics that, that you, we know and we can uh, take from okay. the ADR. Quick, because we got to move to other presentations. Okay, Rebecca, are you doing? Or are you just moving the cursor? Do you have anything? To okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. Hey, who's going to go up there and do the summary on the board for me, please? No, not not somebody from the group. Okay. No, no, not somebody from the group. Somebody else that was paying attention. Come on. You want to do it? Let's go. Let's go. Well, he's going to do it now. Okay, but well, hold on. What are the two different classes? Come on, talk as you're... No, no, but not from your notes, from your head. Sorry, oh. sir. So we have full service and limited service. Yes. What were the prices per door? 418,000. Uh, That's Miami. Miami. 242. Hold on, let him do it. Let him do it. No, you're writing, you're reading from your notes. What? Go. Talk. Notes. No notes. Wait. <laughs>
Pop! <laughs> you gotta talk while you're doing it, man. Kill it upstairs. something like 89 combined or 90 something like a billion we're still only like at 49 billion right something like that yeah who's got the group yes, yes so yes. so where it seems like other asset classes have, have recovered you know at least volume wise this hasn't happened yet now cap rates seem to have improved, uh, improved a little bit so we were we're down to what 7.8 or something like that Sort of, they call it eight percent between combined, right? And where were we? Similar range. Uh, it's eight point eight percent. Well, we we had they showed they. What did I? Do you yeah. have do you have your presentation open? Oh, yes, that's exactly. No, 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 in your computer. Remember? No computer is open. The you yell at everybody? Yeah. yeah. No, no computers, no phones. So. <laughs> 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 I don't know what to do. You know, if I was a point five. From nine down to eight, right? So from nine. So cap rates have improved a little bit, right? But the volume hasn't come back. Okay? So we talk about full service per full service per door. What were we talking about? Two forty two. And cap rates were roughly? 7.8. We can say 8%, right? Limited service, one what? 168. Cap rates, 8.6. Okay. All right. Miami, 418, totally crazy. That said cap rates were 8.4, and we kind of said, ooh, that sort of thing seemed up. Uh, but there was 1.8 billion of transactions, which was, you know, a pretty sizable amount, you know? So it's like, almost 5% of all the hotel transactions. So there must have been something big here. Okay? Ballpark, yeah? Got yeah. that make sense? Yeah. All right. Let's go to let's go to industrial and Dave. Those were under the combined, right? The hotel? Yeah. 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 Come on, let's go. Afternoon. Uh, this is Industrial Sales, Miami Dade County. My name is Chad Maxey. Emmanuel Awkward, President. We first initially looked at it uh, by type. There are two main types that are tracked by RCA. There's an additional type as well, manufacturing, uh, but the RCA only has it by two. Manufacturing, I believe, it looks like is included in warehouse based on our other uh, researches. But uh, but as you can see, 28%. Uh, or excuse me, the, the volume for Flex uh, was only seventeen trillion dollars. No billion. No billion. Yeah, yeah billion. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like maybe one it's, it's million. Seventeen trillion or billion dollars, and then uh, uh, for warehouse it was fifty-nine billion dollars, and then uh, both are are up from last year. Flex is up twenty-eight percent, and then warehouse is up sixty-three percent. Uh, there's a lot more warehouses being traded, 5,700 versus uh, uh, 1,600 for flex. And then um, the, the dollar per square foot is only 68 for warehouse and 107 for flex. Uh, and then the cap rates are near 7%, 6.7 for warehouse. Um, and do, then, you, do you have that the sort of relative peak to trough or? We do, we do. It's, okay. it's, it's grass. Uh, so, and then just a, a, another side note, you know, single tenant versus multi-tenant, uh, it's only twenty uh, million dollars worth of sales out of the whole seventy-six million dollars worth of sales. So the rest of them were multi-tenant warehouses or flex space. Yeah. So uh, now you go from twenty-eight percent to market we kind of looked at three uh, market sectors like the United States as a whole uh, where you have your cap rates at 6.8 percent 
and then you come down to the southeast. Yeah, let's let as we did with the other groups just for time. Come from Mar national to to your market. Please. All right. So from national to Miami, Miami you have about seven point four percent with not uh, nine hundred eighty-eight uh, million in volume, and the uh, average per square feet is ninety-eight dollars in Miami market compared to seventy-six dollars per square feet in the whole national. Okay, what does the 14-15 percentage it's, represent? It's, that's the year, so from 2014 to 2015, 2015 the change in, in the uh, market. And if you go to the next So one, you're saying the change in what, volume? Volume. Yes. So there was a 115 percent increase correct. from 14 to 15. Yeah, okay, was, all right. You'll see there's a Okay, okay, but don't, don't, that, that, don't, 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 yeah. <laughs> Too much information over there. Okay, so, so what you're telling us is national averages were 76 bucks and that included flex and warehouse yeah. yes. and warehouse was 68 flex was like a, a buck five or something like that so, so it, it sounds like the, the, when what did you say it was like a 70 30 break like right. 70 yeah. percent well, if you go one slide back you see the uh, right se se There's right seven uh, 60 60 well, that's not the percentage, but there is 59 warehouse and 17, so there is more of this, so the number is more like around 70 something on an average, like everything combined. So you okay, so, so you're telling me it's actually even a greater number, so it's six eighths. What, what is that, 80%? Six eighths is 80%? Or is that 40%? Wait, what's 60%. Six divided by eight is three quarters, right? 75%. 75%. 75% industrial, 25% <laughs> flex, or yeah. warehouse and flex. Okay, so, so which is why this brings the average is at 76. Okay, but you're telling us Miami is trading at a higher cap rate than national. Yep, and last week I believe someone mentioned that it was like $9.1 $9 for. No, $8. Dollars. It was $8 gross. All right. So, yeah. so and, and, and if you Okay, but we're, 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 but, we're, but we're not talking about rents yet. We're talking about dollars here. Because I'm trying, what I'm trying to triangulate to the class is how do we have a lower or a higher cap rate, but a significantly higher per square foot value? So are you telling me that Miami's basically a flex market? Is that what you're telling me? Well, I mean, right now we found another data that. Uh, yeah, go, 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 go. I, I was telling them. The All right. Um, I, I guess looking at the number, I would say yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see here on the second chart, the middle chart, you know, that's the average per square feet, and there's huge spikes in 14 and 15 when it, when it comes to price per square feet. Uh, and it has to do with the amount of volume. The, the spikes correlate with the bottom chart, which is the amount of volume being sold, and so. Well, it, so so it, it wait so so you're telling me, you're telling me, that in 2014, industrial in Miami was selling for 180 dollars a square foot. At that quarter, quarter three. Yes. Well, I want annuals. I I want annual. That's. So the annual is probably going to be around 100. It says 140. Is that right. the one on the well, right? But it, you, it's, it's by quarter, so. Okay, well, you can't you look at quarters. Quarter. You've got to take a look at years. But down below it has years, not quarters. Yeah, that's yeah those are the years. It's quarters. It's quarters. Those are the years. Each bar is a quarter. No, that, no, that, you guys are the same thing. Those are years. It looks like each bar is a year. I, I, I get okay. it, but I'm telling you that I, I, I found the yearly total late, but the reality is, is it, Okay, there were three quarters. tabs so that we know how to work with RCA. There's a monthly volume or yep. transaction tab, there's a quarterly tab, and there's an annual tab. Okay, now, do you have another slide here? Okay, so let's go back to the question. Is Miami a warehouse? Is Miami a flex market? I mean, that's, what, that's the implication of that, or is there another explanation? Well, I mean, right now, that we looked at the Cushman and Wayfield. Actually, right now, Miami is not really building anything in a warehouse except for like one of the sub markets. But from what we understand, it's a flex space. Like majority of what's in the market is flex. Okay. Well, that wouldn't be driving around. That wouldn't be my conclusion. Let's go back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Very good. Now, let me ask you, what did we decide that the real rents were, Chad? Last week, you <laughs> said a number, then you sent me an email. It's, it's, it's gross. Eight, rent. Eight, eight something, what, you want to call it 850? 850. 850 industrial gross? Correct. For Dade County? Correct. Okay. And can we estimate operating expenses for industrial in Dade County? Two dollars and fifty cents. Two dollars. Let's call it two fifty, just to be round. Okay, op expenses, right? So we've got six dollar triple net rent, right? Right. Okay. If we were to divide that by seven cap, what does that give you per square foot? Eighty five seventy. Eighty five seventy. $85.71, Okay. All right. And what did we say we were at? $98, right? $98. Let's fill in the numbers. You didn't pay attention, please. Okay. So what did we say here was $98 and said 7.4 cap rate. I say bonkers on this, okay? I can buy this. That's, that's crazy. Now, what does that include? What does real capital analytics include? What does it include? I told you guys. A, B, and C asset classes. So, you know, this has all kinds of junk. What does East Group or Pro Lodges pay for industrial? What is it, you know, you're working for an industrial developer. What cap rates are, is class A industrial four going and in the fours, exactly. So, this obviously has a lot of noise in it, okay? So, depending where you're playing in the space, that's going to have something. So, what did we say uh, volume wise? What did we say? Basically, a billion dollars. In 2015? Yeah, one billion. One billion. And what was the national volume? 76. 76 billion. billion. So. Or 6.8 cap rate. Yeah, so. And we didn't get too far back. Did we get too far back? We didn't get too far back, right? No. So we didn't get. We didn't if, get. If you go to the next slide, you can see the trend over time. Yeah, but I, I can't see numbers there. I, I can't. I'm not blind. But you can see the general trends. Or, or, they yeah. go down and then they come back up. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but, uh, yeah, so we're kind of, and cap rates are, you know, again, I would tell you um, cap rates nationally, we're going to take a look at, you know, high class product, higher A, a, a class, B plus, are going to be lower than that. And we said that there was what, a warehouse category, and what else did we say? Flex. Yes. There was flex, right? And what's the distinction between flex and warehouse? Isn't it warehouse well, and manufacturing? Flex has office space in it. Yeah. So Flex has a higher proportion of, and people as a rule of thumb would use like a 50% build out. So Flex space would be for smaller users, and there is a cost or a price differential, depending on you want to look at it, just because there is a larger component. What, what is the typical office component in industrial? Any, anybody know? 30 cents. Let's try door number two. Uh, depending on the, on the, are you talking about the No, no, I'm talking about warehouse the distribution. Square feet? Oh. Yeah, the percentage. 10, 15 percent. Yeah, 10 to 15 is, is what people would use as a rule of thumb. Because it's bulk distribution and what you need is like a little place with a bathroom and, you know, okay? So, uh, so flex is probably closer to 50 percent or 50-50 and warehouse is probably something closer to 10 or 15 percent, right? And these things were saying, that this was like a 7% cap and this was a six and change, you know, six, five or something like that. The thing that's important to say is there is a higher risk profile with flex because of the build out, because of the type of tenants, it tend to be, you know, um, smaller tenants, less credit and all that. And when we looked at volume of the 76, what did we say that this was like 80%? So this was like 59 and this was 17 billion, something like that? Yeah, that's right. Right, something like that, okay. so. Let's go back to the example that we have here. Does this kind of make sense? Well, maybe on a blended rate it does. Now, let's, let's take a look at product that Flagler is building in Bedwood. Are you, are you, have you looked at that at all? Yes. What are they asking industrial gross? Uh, 12. Okay. $12. Okay. And what are the operating expenses there? Two. Yeah, still, so, still so it's still not, not radically different. So now my net rent is what? Okay, so somebody divide 950 by, let's say four that half, it's, yeah. let's say that it's four and a half cap. Divide that by four and a half cap. 
<laughs> Divided by 5.5. What, 9.5? Yeah, 9.5. 0.055. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.72. Sorry? 172. Yeah. 172. Okay, so when you saw a transaction at 140 and 160, maybe it wasn't far off, right? So what does industrial land cost? What does land cost in Dade County? Very expensive. You know? 200. 100. 300. <laughs> going, going. I don't know. Let's use it. Use it. Use it. No. no. So let's say that let's use twenty-five dollars per square foot. Okay. How much can you cover industrial land roughly? What's what's the average coverage? Well, sorry. Fifteen thousand square feet. No. Well, fifteen thousand. What out of what? Forty percent of what? So let's use 40 as a, that's a pretty good number. So in order to divide that by 40, how much are you in on land for land for, for building foot? What was the so if $25 is land and you can only take advantage of 40% of it, how much per building foot do you have in Ten land? Dollars. Ten dollars. Divide it, not multiply it. Okay, so you haven't built anything, you're at $60 per square foot, right? So, who, who's building shell? You're doing shell? You're doing shell somewhere? Yeah. What, what, what's it going to cost to build an industrial shell, a $200,000 box? We Give me hard costs only. We're doing this shell. 50 bucks. Uh, is it still up? Is it tilt up? Let's say tilt up. Tilt up? Probably about 50 you're 50, 60. You're saying 70. I mean, two up the what, what, what's Flagler paying? Do you know? Uh, no, I'm trying to think of it. I mean, I've been out of the game for a while. It, uh, some years ago, it was 40. I'm probably, I, I'd go closer to 60 to 70, okay? Okay, so you don't have much build out here. So 10%, 10%, right? 10%. Uh, let's assume a 200,000 square, so two, this is on a sort of basic case, say a 200,000 square foot warehouse, 10% is 20,000 square feet of office, right? At 35 bucks is what? 700,000 bucks divided, so what are we going to say that that's what? Per square foot, three and a half bucks, that doesn't add that much, four bucks, five bucks a square foot for TI. Leasing commissions are going to add how much to this? 6%. Well, 6% of what? Total, total term of lease. Okay, well, so what are we saying here, right? So 950, right, times 0 0.06, right? Are you paying six or are you paying seven? Six. You're sure you're sure. not paying four? We're, we're sure the same so you're paying, so how much is this per square foot? One fifty-eight. Give me what's an average lease term for an industrial lease in Dade County? Three. Three years? Five years. Five years. Five years? Ten. <laughs> okay. So for a building like that, we could say ten. You seven. So we might add as much as ten bucks a square foot, right, for marketing, right? What about development costs? What's A and E on a, on a structure like this? Uh, I mean, can we spend three bucks, four bucks? <coughs> Some of you guys are graduating, come on. <coughs> what, what's A and E on, on an industrial project? Christian, oh, yeah. what's, it, what's it on an apartment building? Per square foot. Four dollars, use four dollars. Use four dollars, okay. What else? What else do we have? Do we have to add anything else to this? Does money cost us money? Yeah. Do we have the interest? Yeah. So, I mean, so what? what's what's this? Uh, so 200,000 square foot box, just to do the example, what's the interest going to be? What, how much are you going to finance for that? What's it going to cost? 6%. Okay, so, but how much are we going to finance? Probably. Probably. No, I didn't say the term. How much is it? 65%. 60%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70%. 70
Yeah. So let's just do, we're, we're kind of, we're doing circular math here, but 200,000 square feet, right? At, let's just choose $150 a square foot for argument's sake, right? Is how much? What is that? 30, is that, what? what's that? 30 million bucks? Yeah, 30 million. 30 million bucks, right? So we're going to finance how much of that, we said? So we're going to finance 20 million bucks for argument's sakes, right? And it's going to take us how long to do this? Nine months, right? Something like that. So we could say at 6%, and we'll, we just take half of that, right? So a million two, right? Of interest divided in half, 600,000, three bucks a square foot for financing, right? What else are we missing? We gotta pay development people, right? We gotta pay a 6% 6 development fee, 5% development fee? For industrial? 5%, 5% development fee? So we said it was $150 a square foot, we're gonna pay what, 750 for development costs? Something like that? What else are we forgetting? Have we paid any impact fees yet? Legal. Okay. Impact contractor, uh, well, the contractor you just gave me, you guys gave me the 60 to 70 bucks a square foot. So, let's, well, that's what I'm asking, so, so, that's what, well, what are the impact, how much, give me, how much are impact fees? 7.5. Yeah, impact fees are going to be pretty low. Okay, you want to use five dollars just because we don't have any other estimate. Okay. <laughs> okay. And what else did we have? Uh, Legal and let's. You want to throw another five dollars for everything else? Okay. So, 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 so let's go. One thirty, one forty, one fifty, one sixty, one seventy. Right. Right. So it's going to cost $170 per square foot to build. Can you see why the only way this makes sense is if you can get $12 rents and you can sell it at 4.5%? Because if you get this, but you can only sell it at 5.5, five, what are you being compensated for your development risk? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Right? So. So why did I go through all this math? Because there is a reason why a building's average, including A, B, and C in Dade County, are so much higher than everywhere else. And ultimately, that's the single biggest reason. And the debt. And, and, hold on, and construction is probably a fair bit, because who else comes from other places? You talk, how do you do a warehouse in Indiana? You get like one of those metal bolt butler building things, right? Some truck drives up and they just, you know, slap plop the slap it on, right? You know, here you gotta pour, you gotta pour that panel. How thick are the panels here, right? You know, so anyway. So all right, why don't we get both office groups up at the same time? Because we've got commonality of information. Okay? So, so you've got commonality of information and so that we can finish. Uh, right. You got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Office A, Office B. Oh boy. So did, we'll are we tying the two classes together? Are we, are we, does it make any sense? No? We have to talk at the same time. It's like a lot of numbers, like red yeah. or long day of numbers. It's kind of a little complicated. How are you? Yeah. Remember the numbers. This week we're talking about sales comps. How do we relate the two? You know, I mean, it's. Uh, Quincy, could you do me a favor? Could you just erase it for me, please? Hey, you're good. Okay, Okay, so, all right, listen, listen, so, but if I could get both groups up, Maricela, don't get sensitive on me, um, we can, we can talk together about, we can talk together about the U.S., so we can talk about, like, somebody could tell me, like, Specifically, like how that breaks down, like what U.S. market, like the 247, are there different sort of types of assets and all that? There might be. Okay, 
Why doesn't it's one group mic set up? Please stand. Oh. Okay. I guess, so. I guess we're kind of. Yeah, you're, you're tag teaming here. We, all of a sudden. All right, so uh, Office A team is uh, Ryan, Marinella, Claudius, and Quincy. Um, so just to give a quick overview of the current state of affairs in the U.S., uh, we're looking at the entire U.S. market is a $247 per square foot average. Uh, in 2015, 146 billion in sales, and uh, uh, currently um, trading a 6.8% uh, cap rate. Palm Beach, you can okay, see. Okay, hold, hold on. Don't go to Palm Beach yet. Do you have any other data to share with us? So this is our presentation. That, it's all on one page? No. no. <laughs> okay, if you have data that tells yeah. me what that U.S. market is like, can we go to it? Okay, thank you. It looks kind of like this. Okay, so what we did, we compared for the year, uh, yearly rate, um, and we, our peak year was 2007, so we took 2007 and compared it to 2015. Uh, the CBD, we have 5.7, uh, the cap rate, with a $250 for footage. And the 15 went uh, down to 5.5. So as we saw with multifamily, for example, uh, cap rates are are more dear, are lower, and the price per pound is is more expensive. So we're we, we've passed peak already here too. And do we have volume numbers? Do we know uh, what? We have it. It's on the computer. Or does the other group have volume numbers? Yeah. Can you tell us what it is? We have volume. We have volume. We're, we're in, uh, we have volume. Yeah, they we have, on the computer. Yeah, yeah well, we have volume. Okay, so we don't have a per year volume. Okay. But do we know from peak to, or from valley to or from peak to repeak? We don't have it in ours. Okay. All right. Does the other group have it in theirs? Yeah. Somebody exited our group. Somebody sabotage your presentation. <laughs> They deleted your presentation? Yep. Everybody's going to get an F here, unless whoever did it stands up. Well, we didn't do it, but we have to win. <laughs> what was it? We So we, we don't know. Yeah, we did. It's 145. Also. Uh, the, the, the total, what? Per year. 145 million. No, billion. Billion. Yeah. For the total U.S. market. And uh, the, the total volume for the U.S. market is 247 per square feet. That's yeah, what we had. they said that earlier. Okay, but no, I, the, the question that we had was, do we know what the volume was in 2007 versus what it is today? Yeah, I have so, that. So, we, we so, so uh, CBD volume in 2007 was 107 billion. It dropped off sharply. That that was the peak. Uh, and for CBD, it's it's climbed back to 66 billion. Uh, for suburban in 2007, it was 107 billion as well, and uh, is now clawed back to 78 billion. Uh, in the total office market back in 2007, 215 billion, and now it's up to 146. Okay, so it it's, it sounds to me, if if the numbers you just rattled off made sense to me, so you're telling me is transaction volume, transaction flow has not come back, but pricing has exceeded where we were. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of similar to hospitality. Pricing has improved. But the volume hasn't come back. And cap rates okay. Have, it remains just about the same. Right. Very stable. Okay. Well, <coughs> 20 basis points on a million uh, square in, feet in is Robert, like. It's, it's for the last three years. It, it went to, from uh, seven point six. Oh, okay, but we're no, we're national right now. We're not. We're, don't don't jump. Don't confuse them. Okay. So, so you're telling me so national since you guys presented CBD, can you present suburban? nationally can your group present suburban nationally oh, yeah. yeah okay let's go um, no, that's um, all right good, good we luck. can see uh, suburban national 
Uh, in 2015, it was at a seven cap and 191 per square feet. We didn't do 2007. We just did 2013, 14, and 15. Um, so throughout the three years, uh, we can see that the cap rate has gone down, so the value of the building has increased, and the price per square feet, it went down, but then went up tremendously for uh, 2015. Okay, but let's, I mean, re remember, we're trying, to take, we're trying to take stuff away here. So you're telling me is 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 if I if I if I got this correct, CBD office building in a country sells for three hundred and sixty dollars a square foot, and suburban sells for a, for hundred and ninety, yeah. and and national cap rates for office are five point five, and they are seven percent for suburban office. That's what, we have. Wait, that's what you that's what you just told the class. Who said who said nine point five? No, five. I didn't say nothing about nine. Guys, guys, li listen to what I said. Tell me if what I said is wrong. You have told me as a collective group that CBD office trades for $360 a square foot and a 5.5% cap rate and suburban trades for $185 a square foot or $190 a square foot with a 7% cap rate. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, that's all I said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. 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 Is that up there? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, what, the second part he said is on the other one. Okay. So while you're there, why don't we finish? Tell us about the Broward office market. Okay. Um, so the Broward office market uh, right now in 2015 has sold uh, for 151 per square foot at a 7.7 .7 cap rate. And compared to uh, the office market, all in general, uh, for the U.S. is 247, so we're below that um, with price per square foot, um, and then above it in cap rate. But then we also have to have consideration that uh, South Florida is in a main hub for office compared to like New York or Chicago, San Francisco. So there obviously is going to be a difference in cap rate oh. and per square foot. Okay, but but you know m maybe the implication is a little bit different than the way we were looking at this, right? So if if we were saying that nationally, CBD is 360, and suburban is 190, right. and in Broward you're trading at 180, maybe the, one Broward, 151 or 151. I, I would say that I wouldn't compare the 151 to an average of 240. The implication is is that essentially Broward is a suburban market, and most of the transactions in Broward have been suburban, and that's why they are more similar to national trends in suburban. And the only time you're ever going to get numbers in Broward or Dade or Palm Beach that emulate national averages is when you have one large tower selling downtown. But the CBD in Broward is four buildings. You know, the CBD in Dade is eight or nine buildings. So unless one of those buildings transact, our national averages locally are going to be, or, sorry, our per square foot transactions locally are going to emulate national suburban pricing. Or they should, that's what doing. and that's what they're doing. And the, well, but this is Broward, so I don't know. Okay, so so if if a 900 brickle building sells, and you're looking at Dade numbers, maybe the year or the period in which it sells, it's going to emulate, you know, you know, national CBD numbers. Yeah. Okay, but the comparison, I think, or the implication of. Broward selling at 180 or 158 or whatever the number is, 150, 160, is it it emulates a national suburban number. So that's kind of what you know what we are. I think that's what we are. Yeah. And what did we say rents for last week? $35 CBD. Was that well, uh, suburban? Um, well, 28. Yeah. 28. Was that full service? Yeah. yeah. Or was that triple net? Full service. All, all triple net. That was triple net. Yeah. Let's use 30 as a rule of thumb. Can somebody take 30 and divide it by 0 0.07? So if, if, if 28 was a triple net number and buildings are trading at a 7 cap, um, we wouldn't have an average of $158 a square foot, right, that we would trade at. So let's, let's try $28 as a full service number. 
What are operating expenses? Use it just a round number for? 13. Yeah, but let's say maybe they're more suburban. Why don't we just use a round number? Why don't we use $20 as a triple net number? Now divide 20 by seven cap. 285. So we're still looking at the sort of rule of thumb here. It'd be interesting to take a look at what that subset is because 150, 160 a square foot seems light compared to what the market rents are. Okay? And, and let's point out something about the, the medical um, offices comparison is, is about uh, averaging with the, with the closer also to the, the, to the national CBDs. But, but higher than the suburban. Yeah, same Between the CBDs and yeah. the, and the... Right, so, so real capital analytics over the last few years has started to also aggregate a medical office building, you know, subclass because they've seen enough volume to sort of justify it. And obviously it's going to have probably more build out. It may be higher rise. Higher than, cost to build. So, you know, higher cost to build, um, higher rents, hence even at the same cap rate, you're going to have a higher per square foot cost associated with it. Why don't we go to talk about Palm Beach County? I want Palm Beach. I, we already left the national market. Okay. Palm Beach. Well, the average is uh, 35 per year, 500 million uh, volume. A average 35, what is TX? Transactions. Transaction per year. And you did that over what time frame? From 07 to 15. 7 to 15. Okay. 07 to 15 average. Okay. 2.3 million units, cap rate 7.4. Hold on, what are 2.3 million units? What are we talking about? Average sales during that time frame. Well, we talk about there, there are 2.3 million square feet that were sold. What are units? So you're, you're okay. So let's let's so so so. so is the $500 million volume an average volume, or is this, I want to know what 2015 is. Do we have 2015? Hey, okay, we have there we go. Computer. There we go. Yeah, so in 2015, we're at 249 a square foot average, 867 million volume at 6.9 cap. Okay, so, so let's, let's uh, can, can you go back to that slide you had? So, um, if 247 U.S. national market averages is, um, what did we say last week that CBD was like 40% and suburban was like 60%? Yes. Then it would hold roughly without my calculator that the 247 number kind of makes sense with 360 of CBD and 190 of suburban, right? So, if the Palm Beach average for last year it's kind of like that national average. It seems like probably something sold in the CBD and then there were suburban sales. Mm -hmm. Something like that, right? That Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I, I believe it's so much higher than per hour. Well, the, the, the point there is, is I, I would have to say there had to be a CBD building sold in Palm Beach during that time frame. Did you go back to the CBRE report or CoStar to see any specific transactions in the period? I didn't see any specific Okay. Uh, there were some on the, if you compare it to the Broward, there were some, some markets in some markets in Broward doing down the, the suburban, like I think it was Cypress Creek, which is like 120 or something. And um, but on the other, because of the, the volume there, they pulled down a lot. And uh, on the other hand, Sawgrass had uh, 
sale, uh, an extraordinary sale for for close to the to the national average. That it, and it's it's a sub market, so it doesn't balance out because of the value of, of the transaction. Yeah, I, I don't know because what you call saw, sawgrass, which I would call Sun sunrise, is a pretty is a pretty suburban market now. There may be, there are a couple of mid-rise office buildings there that maybe are, you know, more in that 250 or 260 a square foot range. And, and that, but there was in the CDRE uh, report, they were giving uh, sales for uh, for office spaces and it was one for 181 per square foot in Hollywood. Okay, but that's kind of like what the average was. I mean, you had, you like 160 or something, okay. so. Okay. But, but that's above the 151. Yeah, but that's like 150 is what I'm saying. It's like your average that you have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So if we were to summarize this, right, if we were to summarize a lot of numbers, right, very good. All of them. So if we were going to summarize this, just, I mean, what did we say? We, we said that there was CBD office. We said there was suburban, right? We didn't really take a look at it, but there was also a medical one. And we didn't, and there was... But the huge, medical was the same. Huge, huge volume. I don't remember, frankly, I don't remember the volume. I don't know that that came that clear. Well, I had a question about the volume. One slide is so The other slide is so 146. Okay, let's. Offices 67 billion, okay, and office suburban 78 billion, okay, and medical. Should add roughly 160 something like that. What did they have? 145. 145 billion. Okay. And the average cap rate that they were reporting last year was 6.8 percent. Okay. And by all counts, we've got we had different periods, but it seems like that's definitely compressed a little bit from somewhere around seven, sometime later on. Okay. Um, Cap rates here are obviously going to be lower than they are here, right? So we said CBD office was 5.5 five, five and then 7, right? right. On 7. Yeah. Yeah, so 5.5 five and 7%. Okay. And we had a couple of different markets here. And we said Palm Beach was trading roughly at 250 a square foot at a 6.9 cap. It seemed like there was a you know big transaction there in the CBD otherwise. And here we're at 151 a square foot, which seemed a little bit at 7.1, right? Um, and, and so um, we did a comparison with rent here. Do you remember the rents in Palm Beach? 18. That was a, a, a triple net number. A triple net, yeah. So 18 at 6.9%. Can somebody tell me what that pencil's out to, please? Two sixty a square foot, and what did we say the average price was there? Two forty nine. Not 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 off. You know we can kind of correlate market rents with uh, with transaction values. Okay, so you guys see that? Yep. Makes sense. Do you want me to take a picture of it or something? Or no, yeah. the, the medical office is actually yeah. not included as one of the. Right, it's not included. Yeah, no, no, that's. Otherwise, it wouldn't it wouldn't add across. So the student housing that we calculated the first time is actually this one for one fifty and now one fifty seven. No, 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 it, it's yeah. one hundred dollars off of the model. Great. Well, everybody, oh, I, I, I want to take a picture too. Hold on, I want to take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a selfie stick? <laughs> oh, selfie <laughs> arm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
All right. So, with that, somebody's uh, computer. Mine. Sorry. So with that, we're finished for the, uh, except for the quiz that we're going to have now. We always have a quiz, and we always finish early. <laughs>